So in this video, we're going to be discussing the stages of sepsis. So in this video, we'll talk about uh, the first step, severe sepsis, severe sepsis, septic shock, and uh, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. So before sepsis, there is something called uh, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, also known as SEERS, or however you'd like to pronounce that. Basically, the requirements for somebody being diagnosed with systemic inflammatory response syndrome is two or more of the following symptoms. And this can be any, any two combined. So hyperthermia or hypothermia, so either above 38 degrees Celsius or below 36 degrees Celsius, a heart rate of greater than 90 beats per minute. These are often the, uh, the two, two most common ones. Respiration rate of greater than 20 breaths per minute and a white blood self count of uh, over 12,000 units a liter is um, also indicative, is also a um, qualifier for systemic inflammatory response syndrome. One important thing to point out is that each one of these criteria needs to be taken with a grain of salt because some some patients they naturally have a heart rate above 90 beats per minute they would have that whether they're having an infection or not this is something as a nurse or a medic or or whoever you are you need to take into consideration before you uh you immediately jump to conclusions so sepsis is very similar to systemic um, inflammatory response syndrome with the point that it is in response to an infection and basically an infective pathogen has been confirmed this is a perfect example of of the combination between an infection and systemic inflammatory response syndrome so you could have systemic inflammatory response syndrome and it not be not be sepsis but once you combine it with an infection as you can see in this middle overlap, that's what creates the sepsis. And, and really that's the only difference is once you've identified an infection. So after sepsis comes severe sepsis. And basically you're just building on at this point. So it's everything mentioned previously, plus it's a sepsis associated with an organ dysfunction or hypoperfusion to an organ. Basically, now there's a specific organ in the body that is being affected by the sepsis. Septic shock is everything we talked about before, including hypotension. And it's important to remember that it's hypotension despite adequate fluid resuscitation along with the presence of perfusion abnormalities. So even though you're trying to fill this patient with fluids and uh, resuscitate them with fluids, it is not working and they are hypotensive and this is resulting in septic shock. And an easy way to remember this is normal, normal shock. When a patient goes into shock, it, they also experience hypotension. The final step is multi-organ dysfunction syndrome, also known as MODS. And um, what you need to know about this is that uh, it's the pre basically everything we mentioned before, and it's a severely altered organ dysfunction in an acutely ill patient. Again, remember, you have to take in consideration the entire patient as a whole. Just because uh, a patient is having problems with their kidneys doesn't mean they're going through multiple organ dysfunction syndrome as a result of, of uh, sepsis. It, it's not, it, it, they could have been having problems with their kidneys beforehand. And um, it's important to remember that basically it has to be caused by the sepsis. And uh, that's what basically what I mentioned here, only when directly caused by the sepsis or infection. So that's all, thanks for watching. Comment a new video suggestion below. Any questions, comment below as well. I'll get back to you, I'm usually pretty quick and uh, subscribe for new videos every week.